That last person, I loved it when he said, you know, where else do you get to see people launch to space? What a great job. <laughs> so people who have been in the program some 20, 30 years, um, who have been with United Space Alliance throughout its entire history. And by the way, speaking of United Space Alliance, we have with us the company's COO, Dan Brandenstein, also an astronaut. Good to see right. you, sir. You yeah, good to see you, Dan. <laughs> now, how many missions did you fly? Remind us. I flew four missions. Any on in this one? I flew the very first one. You okay. He's the first commander. Of uh, that's right. That's right. So, this is very personal to you. Yes. Yes. I thought I'd be uh, long retired before I'd ever retired. But it doesn't <laughs> seem to be the case. Not so much. So, what are your thoughts today now that you get to see this? Well, any launch is uh, you know spectacular. It's uh, This one's, uh, I guess, a little sad because uh, on 49... Uh, uh, Endeavor uh, really treated us well on that very first flight, and uh, uh, it has performed you know admirably throughout its career, so to speak. And uh, to see it coming to an end uh, with only 25 missions on its under its belt is a little disheartening. 25 down, originally rated for 100, and something that uh, gets safer in many ways as time goes on. Oh yes, uh, you know your the, the the vehicles and the processing and the team has matured very well you know, over the course of the shuttle program, and uh, the, the processing goes smoother, the vehicles perform better uh, because you know we learn how to tweak them and uh, and make them work better. And by the way, we've got our own Miles O'Brien in Orlando joining us as well. Who hey Dan, wish I could be there with you. Uh, you know, I take me back. You you of course as a, a naval aviator, combat missions over Vietnam, uh, test pilot school, all that. What's it like, though, when you're the commander of, of the shakedown mission for a space shuttle? That must have been uh, a privilege and also a little bit daunting. It, it was a privilege. Uh, you know, anytime uh, you're in the aviation community and you get to do a first flight on a vehicle, it's uh, you know a real honor. And uh, obviously, I felt honored to do that. Uh, the, the daunting part was uh, more the mission than it was uh, the vehicle, uh, but uh, it all worked out well. And uh, it was. Uh, a you know, a, a very rewarding mission once we knew the ending. And, uh, you know, you got, you got to take a vehicle out for its first time. Compare it to the other vehicles. Well, on purpose, they're, you know, very similar. So uh, you can, you know, fly one and then uh, fly the next, uh, you know, different one. And, and there's not, you know, a significant amount of difference. And, uh, and, and from the uh, actual flying point, uh, you didn't really notice anything significantly different. Uh, you know, as a went through them, they, you know, each one got a little bit lighter, a little, you know, a little bit better performance, but uh, you know, you're, it's not a significant amount that it, it was obvious uh, as you flew it. You, on, on that first flight, uh, your pilot was this guy, uh, Kevin Chilton, who I guess went on to a reasonably good Air Force career. Yeah, yeah uh, he, he was, he was uh, real adequate. <laughs> how, was, how, how was Chili? As your uh, pilot, you can tell the truth because really we'll keep it a secret. Uh, the, he was he was phenomenal. I mean, I mean he was a, a, a really bright individual. And uh, uh, when we were up there, uh, you know, working on uh, trying to figure out how to capture Inlsat, uh, you know, he was a key player. As we were looking out after the second day, we were unsuccessful. And that evening, we were looking out the, win uh, the window into the payload bay, trying to figure out what our natural resources were. And, uh, and what our next uh, try was going to be. And, uh, and he, he played a key role in uh, coming up with the technique we really used to actually capture that satellite. Was this, this was the famous spacewalk where you actually suited up three people, right? That's correct, yes. And that was, a lot of that was improvised. Walk us through this. This, this mission, I'll never forget this, that shot of Kathy Thornton just kind of holding on to Inosat, yeah, along with, uh, who was she? She was with Tom Akers and somebody else. Who was, who was she with? Well, the, the three people we had outside were uh, Rick Heap, Pierre Thewitt, and Tom Akers. Oh, Kathy, and, I thought Kathy was outside. I got confused. No, no, okay. she, she flew, uh, she did the spacewalk on the next one when we were doing the uh, right. the space station uh, yeah, that was the ease access, demo, uh, demo uh, stuff, demo, yeah. Right. But, well, uh, remind, remind us, because that, that, was, that was an extraordinary moment of improvisation and, frankly, a, a great case in point for why you want human beings in space. So tell us about that whole scenario and how that came to be. Well, it really was. Uh, you know, we the, the, the original intent was to develop. Uh, we developed on Earth a, a bar that was supposed to capture the satellite. And the first day we tried it, uh, it didn't capture it, and the satellite was totally out of control. And we were all pretty well down because we thought that was it, and it was you know a 180 million dollar satellite. Uh, however, about 30 minutes after uh, we pulled away from it, the ground called back and said they had the satellite back under control, which meant we had a, a chance to try again the next day. So we thought we'd learn some lessons on that first day and went back the second day and. Uh, tried again and uh, 
I think we did better, but we still didn't capture it. That bar just wasn't working the way we intended it to. So uh, after being unsuccessful that day, uh, we called down to the ground and said, hey, we did it as good as could be done with this piece of equipment and recommended uh, that uh, we take a day off and come up with a new idea. And that's kind of when that night we had the whole crew looking out into the payload bay trying to figure out what we could use and how we could do it. And uh, we came up with a couple ideas, sent it to the ground and, and went back to sleep and uh, then got up the next morning and uh, kind of decided upon the three-person spacewalk. And then in that day off, uh, they said, well, on the ground, they said, well, we'll send three people in the, in the uh, water tank and see if we can get them in the airlock. And uh, I wasn't sure they were gonna come up with the right answer, so I told uh, those three guys to put their suits on and, and get in the airlock in case the ground, it didn't work on the ground, that we could say it worked up, up there in space. And, uh, and it did, so uh, it just, uh, you know, we resorted to the good old human hand uh, to capture uh, the satellite. That's tool the opposable thumb. That's right. <laughs> well, I can tell you, it's uh, it did tighten that airlock with two people. So three people was there was a real question. Well, that's right, uh, you know, and, 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 it, and it wasn't designed for that. Uh, right. You know, so really they were buddy breathing with the umbilical, umbilical from suit right. to suit. Uh, so uh, you know, it, they could all you know get their breathing air and cooling uh, while they were in those suits. So. Do you remember, who, where did the idea come from? Did it come, did you guys have the idea up uh, in space and, and offered it? Yeah, I think we did. We offered, uh, we came up with two uh, suggestions and, uh, and the priority, uh, the, actually the three person spacewalk was our second priority the night before we went to bed, but when we woke up the next morning, we'd, we determined that that was our favorite one and, and so then, uh, and the ground concurred with it and we kind of pursued that. So uh, it worked, uh, you yeah, know, it worked out very well. Now, as a commander of a mission, when, when you, you send three people into an airlock, never been tried before, to do something, just grab this huge satellite, that's, that's uh, ultimately, you know, they're your responsibility. Were you pretty scared watching that whole thing unfold? No, I wasn't scared. Uh, you know, we'd, we'd practice going through the airlock, and, and, and we had, uh, uh, before we even recommended that, you know, we as a crew sat down and, and, and played all the what-if games. You know, what if somebody has a suit problem and has to come in, and what if this and what if that and and it was really fortuitous in our training uh, Pierre threw it had taken an old glove that uh, an old EVA glove and and taken a piece of that what was a sun shield uh, a, a piece of titanium and just hacked away at his glove and that would have probably been our biggest concern of cutting a hole in the glove and and since we had just for no particular reason done that during training it, it gave us confidence that you could in fact grab the satellite the way we uh, suggested and uh, and that it would uh, you know not be a, a significant problem or a hazard yeah of course you know you you go back to the very earliest days of the uh, the space shuttle program uh, STS-8 your first flight uh, you know it's um, yep, we lost miles for a second he'll come yeah. back okay easier I think if uh, number one if we if we if we had a shuttle to keep the station going number two if we do what was next and and we're, we have neither at this point do we well you know, that's right and uh, you know it's uh, kind of sad because you know we have the station up there now and to uh, really optimize its utilization uh, we need uh, you know the up mass and down mass capability and uh, uh, you know and, and we're not sure when that's going to be available next uh, you know there's some things scheduled but uh, they're on unproven vehicles and uh, it's going to you know they're going to have to come through and, uh, and and even at that you, you still won't have the the you know the large capability for uh, up mass and uh, nor down mass uh, so uh, i you know well, it, it doesn't uh, then, I, i'm concerned frankly you know that we we're not going to be able to support this space station as we should with a six person crew it's a national laboratory we spend 100 billion bucks and what happens if we do in fact have a piece that needs to go either either go up or down that only the shuttle could do. What do we do then? Uh, good question. I don't have the answer to that. Uh, you know, it depends on what the piece is, and and uh, you know, the, the the last several missions and the next uh, couple will be, you know, taking up spares, and uh, and they hope to have a good supply of spares up there, and uh, uh, you know, hopefully uh, they'll have spares for uh, if anything fails. So you know, what has failed? Yes, sir. Uh, Nine fifty-two. I'm sorry. Nine fifty-one. Uh, final, our, uh, final close -out. No, we don't hear them there, no. but we're hearing the final closeouts in work right now. And uh, closing in on, what, about an hour and... Yeah, just about an hour. 20 and minutes to launch. Yeah, 20-ish yep. minutes. Yep. Yep. 
So with no <coughs> real problems, I don't want to jinx it. No, don't don't say that. Uh, and <laughs> the, the clouds above the ceiling level. Yeah, they're they're starting to break up a little bit. What? The sun coming up is the uh, the forecast is up. that uh, by about 8:15 or 8:30 this will be have moved out. So that's okay. what the the Get weather experts crossed. were saying. So. Yeah. <laughs> so Dan, give us your prediction. Launch. A little launch. launch. Yeah. Okay. That'll be a good goal. Very nice. And. <coughs> um, you know, you've been watching your workers get this ready for a while. We saw this behind-the-scenes video, but you've had a chance to to be in with the troops, so to speak, and see what they do day in day out. What's the uh, what's the mood like with all of them now? It, it's it's a phenomenal team. I mean, it just boggles the mind on, on how dedicated they are in light of uh, you know what they see ahead of them. Uh, uh, we have been uh, you know keeping the troops informed for two years now, planning for the transition, uh, but. Uh, you know, two years ago it was right. something that might happen, or uh, right. but now the reality is really setting in, and and regardless of that, uh, uh, they are focused. Uh, they are doing an outstanding job, and uh, it, it's kind of interesting. You, you talk to them, you hear more often than than you would expect. People say, you know, I've been with this program for you know 10 years, 20 years, 15 years, and by golly, I'm gonna see through the end, and uh, I'll worry about what happens next, uh, you know, after that, and. Uh, uh, we've been doing a lot with them, trying to help them prepare for what we would refer to as their Plan B. Yep. A lot of the techs have, have gotten recertified with their AP uh, certification for <laughs> FAA and and uh, <laughs> set up a variety of uh, opportunities. And uh, uh, the, the the local community here has been helping out, uh, and uh, so it's uh, uh, not pretty, but uh, you know it's, it's going as good as one could expect. And it's something you know we've known about since 2004, seven yeah. years. So. Yeah. It's not something unexpected, but it's still not easy for, I know, for you to issue layoff notices right. and uh, for the workers to get them, even though they've yeah. known the shuttle's retiring and that means that their jobs as well uh, yeah. will go away. Uh, this can't be a tough thing at this, you know, at this time to see such good people, uh, even if you have taught them new skills, to have to leave yeah. the program. Yeah. And well, and we're else. making an effort to, to retain as many as we can, but you know you need jobs for that. So we're branching out into other areas to, to try and retain as many of those skills as we can. So if and when another program comes along, uh, that you know we don't have to start uh, building the team from scratch. Exactly, and the important thing to point out: United Space Alliance doesn't go away. Uh, the company's still here. There's right. still thousands of workers, just fewer than before. Right. That's correct. So you're going to maintain a crew here, Alabama, Houston, and uh, see along with the rest of us, I guess, what is next, what it's going to be. Well, we, we were, uh, we're working uh, with uh, Lockheed Martin on Orion, mm -hmm. uh, and we have some, you know, some work there. The, uh, the logistics depot down here has some very unique capability, <coughs> and we're branching out uh, with DOD customers uh, in, in that area. Uh, and uh, you know, as the uh, uh, SLS and uh, comes along, uh, we, we hope to be uh, a, a partner on that. Uh, we're on uh, the CC Dev two. We're uh, a partner with uh, several of those. Uh, so uh, you know, we're kind of diversifying. We were you know we used to be one company with one contract doing one thing, and and uh, part of the transition plan is to diversify. And that you've been working on for some years as well. That's right. And uh, since you've been getting new customers, I guess you could deem some of that uh, successful work. But it can't be easy. I mean, when you've been doing, as you said, focused on this task, which you still have to have right. the company do, launching space shuttles as a business, uh, you know, that's, that takes takes a lot of effort to, to branch out. Now, you've been part of that effort for a number of years now, right? Yeah, that's correct. And uh, we, we've, been, we've been working, uh, you know, like I say, real hard on it and uh, uh, have been successful, but you know, we're going from a 10,000-person company down to probably about a 3,500-person company, and uh, uh, you know, and then the plan is hopefully as uh, the new programs come along to, to build that back up again. But uh, we got this dip or this trough we're going through, which is uh, uh, always difficult, as you say, laying people off and uh, and, and you know, letting good people go because there's no work anymore for that particular skill. You know, you said there's going to be a launch, right? There is. All right. <laughs> well, good luck. Okay. Thanks a lot. Can't wait to see it. See you, Dan. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks, thanks for joining us. Now let's go over to NASA TV and see what is going on right now with the launch countdown. That's the firm.